All right, my name is Captain Irving, and you're in F Troop. Now, oh, kitty. As our story opens, Private Dobbs has received a letter from his mother. Dear sweet soldier boy, it's been much too long since I've seen you, and now that I've finished work here in New Orleans, I've decided to come to Fort Courage. And don't tell me not to. I've been around enough soldiers to know how to handle them. And when you love someone as much as I love you, you'll travel to the ends of the earth to hold your baby in your arms again. Aww. She also included the newspaper clipping that tells how they honored her for 30 years of service. Dobbs, what's the matter? Has a cat got your tongue? Chow is 10 minutes late and cookie stew is getting hard. Now, come on, blow mess. <laughs> Once he's gone, O'Rourke can't help himself. Get your tail out of my coffee. And now that I've finished work here in New Orleans, I decided to come to Fort Courage. And don't tell me not to. I've been around enough soldiers to know how to handle them. And when you love someone as much as I love you, you travel to the ends of the earth to hold your baby in your arms again. He made two mistakes. He didn't read the second page of the letter and see that it's signed Mom, and he's looking at the wrong side of the newspaper. That's a singer named Laura Lee. Every man at the fort has heard of her and mooned over her a little. Me, I'm wondering what it cost her publicist to get that full-page photo included in the ad. A lot of newspapers of the time weren't set up to handle that sort of thing. O'Rourke will return the letter, but he keeps the picture. Most any guy will have a first guess as to why. And they'd be wrong. First, he has to confess to Dobbs. Just don't tell the other fellas, because they'll tease me about her. She's always writing those mushy things. <laughs> she, uh, she must sure be a loving person, huh? I guess you'd be right glad to see her again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but all that hugging and kissing sure embarrasses a fella. <laughs> yeah, well, don't knock it, soldier boy. <laughs> that went right past Dobbs. I think it's crazy for her to come. Uh, what's crazy about it? Well, what do the other fellas think? Well, they'll just think you're the luckiest son of a gun in the world, that's all. I mean, it's been a long time since any of us saw a real genuine Southern belle. Yeah, I guess she would make the old fort seem kind of homey. That went right past O'Rourke. Didn't she say something in there about retiring? Yeah, and I'm glad. My sweet mama sure could use a rest. Uh, <laughs> tell me something, if an emergency came up, something, you suppose that just one more time she'd perform for the Army? I'm not sure what O'Rourke thinks my sweet mama is code for, but Dobb says sure she'd be happy to do her part. She's been taking care of soldiers her whole life. That concludes today's episode of Two Monologues Do Not Make a Conversation. Rated R for it. Run that by me again. Get every able-bodied Hakawi over to the whiskey bottling plant. Besides, the 4th of July ain't until July. This is more important than the 4th. You'll never guess who's going to honor us with a visit. Laura Lee. Agarn thinks that's crazy. Even crazier is who she's coming to see. Private Dobbs. <laughs> O'Rourke says, we'll make a fortune from this. Agarn says, how are you going to keep something this big from the captain? Well, he can't complain if all the proceeds go to the enlisted men's fund. What enlisted men's fund? Well, yours and mine. Logical. The captain has been away and he just returned with an inspector general. What is that? That is a poster made from the clipping that O'Rourke stole out of Dobbs's letter. He had the Hakawis print up a bunch of them on their printing press. What are you doing, Corporal? Speak up! You're begging the captain's pardon, sir, but the Corporal can't speak up. He has a mouth full of nails. Oh. Fortunately for everyone involved, the Inspector General missed the fact that someone had to explain that to the captain. I suspect he's too busy trying to figure out how he can steal that poster. He didn't have to steal it. He arrested it for attempted murder. He's decided to stay for the concert, and he's convinced Captain Parmenter to invite three prominent generals as well. The captain is talking with Dobbs. When a certain lady arrives here to see you, I, I know that it's only right that you spend a little time with her alone. Thank you, sir. We do have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> but do you think she might 
grace the officer's table, at least for dinner? Dobbs says, I don't see why not. I think she'd love it. Ain't she something? I'm going to buy two seats for the performance. I don't understand. Why should you, of all people, have to buy seats? And why two seats? One for me, one for my mama. That's two, ain't it? Yes, well, one for you, one for your mama's coming here. Well, didn't you just a minute ago ask for her to sit with you at the officer's table? Captain Parmenter says, no, I meant Laura Lee. Dobbs says, why in the world would you ask my permission? But Laura Lee is your fiance, isn't she? Golly, Ned, Captain. I don't know her from Adam. The captain invited the inspector general and three other generals to enjoy a dinner with Dobbs' mother and listen to people eating. The captain has a way out of this. Now, just suppose you received a special delivery letter saying that she couldn't come to you, see, because she'd been called suddenly out of town to, uh, to England, to, to London, England, to appear before the crown heads. And she begged you to understand. Why, well, well, you could understand that she couldn't, uh, she couldn't turn down a royal invitation, right? Yes, sir. Of course, I'm disappointed, but all them crowned heads, Warner, all right, she can go. They draft a letter, dab a little perfume on it, put it in a special delivery envelope with Laura Lee's return address and send it out. Miss Lee herself is in Kansas City doing her absolute final performance tour. Boy, wow, you sure have a gorgeous voice there, boy. Well, thank you. Who are you? Uh, Mims, uh, two Mims. Uh, uh, Abijah Mims, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Mims. What are you? Are you the mayor or a songwriter? No, ma'am. I'm the postmistress. Master here in KC. He, he's also a little tang tongue to twang the tungle toot of the Two cents. That's all I want. Just just two cents. Well, Mr. Mims, I don't understand. This letter, it's a special delivered Private Hannibal Dobbs, F Troop, Fort Courage, and uh it's perfumed. So So there's only a three cent stamp on it. Maybe you forgot, ma'am, but uh, special delivery has been raised to a nickel. She's wondering how she wrote a letter without knowing it and whose perfume that is. Patrice Wymore was born into show business. Her mother was a musician on the vaudeville circuit and she had her little girl performing by the age of six. Once she got a little older, she moved to New York and made it to Broadway pretty quickly. Her beauty and talent opened doors for her just about everywhere and eventually she wound up in movies. One movie in particular, Rocky Mountain in 1950, where she played leading lady to Errol Flynn. If you know anything about him, his life was a monument to selfish excess. Nevertheless, she married him later that year. It was his third marriage. She was 24, he was 41. At least he was 41 chronologically. He only lived another nine years and died at 50, whereupon at least one doctor that observed his autopsy said he had the body of an 85-year-old man. By the time he and Ms. Wymore married, he was in bad shape. He had degenerative issues in his spine that kept him in constant pain, something I can empathize with, as well as tons of other physical issues. She quit acting to look after him, and after he died, she never remarried. He did leave her in good shape. She did a few acting gigs like this one, but eventually retired to Jamaica. He had left her a huge estate and a ranch there, and she and her daughter settled into that life for the rest of her days. But since she now has the letter, that means Jane doesn't have it for Dobbs. So all the men are gathered at the station waiting for the lovely Miss Lee. Captain Parmenter is trying to explain, but he has a problem. Through the mask! Through the mask! The stillness and the spring. Now listen to Dobbs. Dobbs. No, no, listen to him. There's a song the bluebird sings. That little old lady is my mother. Come on, come on. Yeah, no, no, listen, my mother. No, stop that lovely now. But I wouldn't trade one wrinkle on her weather-beaten face for all the curves of Harley's butt. His problem is the men won't shut up. And now it's too late. The stage is here. Welcome to Fort Courage. Hannibal, darling, it's been so long. <laughs> How incensed is Mama going to be at this public display? Tell the truth, I didn't know my soldier boy was such a popular person. Okay, Mama's a winner in my book. So is Laura Lee. Yeah, it's a trope. Yeah, it's used a lot. There's a reason for that. It works. We get the requisite performance by Miss Laura Lee singing a song that a frog will make more famous than she ever could. 
She's clearly more talented than the Frog is since it's 1876 and the song wasn't written until 1899. She wows the whole room, flirts with the soldiers, everything you'd expect. Unfortunately, Dobbs isn't enjoying it as much as he had hoped. If you like a person like that, knowing what theatrical persons are, it's all right with me. And poor, skinny little Blanche Dubois, who's been waiting faithfully for you since the eighth grade, we just have to understand if it doesn't destroy you. Move to Utah. That way you can marry both of them. Four more pink champagne for the brass. <laughs> How are we enlisted men making out? Well, I haven't had time to count it all yet, but offhand I'd say we just about break even. <clears throat> By about uh, three or four hundred percent. Splendid, Sergeant. Splendid. Why, I'll bet there's enough here for every enlisted man and F-troop to buy a set of athletic dumbbells, wouldn't you say so? I'm sure that'll be the first thing on every man's mind when he receives the money, Captain. Everything is forgiven all around. Dobbs isn't in trouble because it was all a big misunderstanding and nothing more. It turned out fine. So let's wrap up Ms. Lee's performance at Fort Courage in the most appropriate way possible. What's next for Laura Lee now that she's given her absolute final performance ever? Another final farewell appearance at Fort Ticonderoga. I have a fiancé there. <laughs> Captain Gerald Fitzroy. Or is that Corporal Roy Fitzgerald? <laughs> no matter. I just like to be needed. I'm what you call a ham. I can empathize with that, too. Laura Lee is a genuinely nice person. Her actions sparked a flurry of performers getting engaged to soldiers all over the frontier. At least four soldiers found themselves engaged to multiple celebrities. Last anyone heard, they were on their way to Utah, but that was never verified. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.